Welcome back. We're continuing on with this guy, and I want to give you full disclosure today. This is the one I was working on, and I've been working on in the first two videos. And I started the third video, and about two minutes in, I was carving right here. Let me get a poker stick. I was carving right here in the hand. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, get the, let me get the camera just a little bit closer. Anyway, I was carving in the hand and the fingers broke. The whole, in fact, the whole hand fell off. There's a glue line right here and there's a glue line right here that maybe you can see. But anyway, the whole thing broke off and I, I was flummoxed. I was like, okay, now what do I do? And I finally decided, you know, let's glue it back together and move on and then I realized well it's going to take a while to set that glue up and it's really hard and so I decided to carve another one to get it to the point where I was and then I said well no before I do that let me carve this one and I'll videotape you know I'll, I'll show the whole thing and then I did the, all this face and everything all the details <laughs> and then realized at the end the camera's not rolling over here I'm looking at I'm looking at my at my computer it's sitting right straight up here and it's it's not rolling it's not recording so i did all that and i thought it was wonderful i was doing a great job until i realized there's nothing on the tape and so i said okay i've already carved this into this point i kind of can't use it because i've got to go back and explain every little step that i made so i decided i would sit down yesterday and i would carve one almost to that point and then go on to on beyond that so I think we're here the only thing I've done here is carved a little bit of the hand and so in this case what I've done is I've taken a quarter inch drill bit this one right here quarter inch and if you want a smaller one you can just know that once you're once you're carving on something this small with this little bit of wood right here you don't have a whole lot to play around with so if you make a little hole and you go in with a bigger hole, it's going to, it has a tendency to chew and sometimes it will catch as you're going down into the bigger, into the, making the hole bigger, it'll catch and it breaks off. I've done that a few times on these. And so I didn't want you to do that before you even carve anything on this hand, take the time to carve, take the time to drill the hole. It's going to be a whole lot easier for you in the long run. And then you can come back and you can get this as thin as you need to to get that hand there. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start right there. And I realize on the other one I had more on the face. A little booger hanging off of there. I had more on the face done, but that will give us another opportunity to make this a little bit better. So anyway, here's what we've done to recap so far. We've carved the hand. We've carved the feet. I'll, I'll have to show you how to do the bottom. We've got a, a, a bulky here for his arm. We'll carve a little bit more to real shape that arm. We've done the headdress in the back where the skull cap is and clean that out. And so we'll, we'll, we'll continue on with this. I've decided on this one. I did not want a, a train coming down here. So I'm going to leave that just as feathers going back here and we'll, we'll indent those in there. So here we go. We're going to, we're going to continue on with this guy and, and I hope we, don't have any more mishaps. I, I didn't, I, I thought about putting those in as bloopers and then I thought, well, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to, to have, to have, have poked that through that hole. And so I'm going to not, I'm going to not, not include that one. It may end up in the blooper somewhere, but I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out. Get my thumb guard on here and we'll continue on. Let's work on the headdress a little bit. I've cut out the head, I've cut out the, the individual separations for the feathers. And so now what I want to do is I want to go back in and I want to deepen those cuts. So right in each of those grooves, I'm going to make a stock cut and make it all the way down all of those grooves for every one. There's, there's two reasons I'm going to do this. One, I want to tuck one feather under another and two, I want to notch out back here where the feathers are. In relationship to the back of the headdress and so as you can see all I'm doing is just cutting into the, each one of those grooves 
and I'm just going to deepen those cuts so that when I come back in I can do one of oh I can do two or three things one I can get rid of these saw marks maybe you can see those I don't know about the lighting in here saw marks there and it will allow me to tuck the feathers in like they like they kind of cascade or overlap so to do that I'm going to use my fishtail gouge and what I'm going to do is go just a little bit up under each of those feathers because it looks like now this one is tucked under that one and I'll do that same thing as I go up and that's all I'm doing is tucking those feathers in underneath the one above it you may have a little bit of cleanup to do when you come back in here and that's easy enough to do with your fishtail gouge and your knife easy enough to do try not to take wood out of the one above it because then it will ruin the effect that you're trying to get to here when you get up here to the top you've got end grain and so sometimes I just do it with a knife it's a lot cleaner and generally it's a lot easier just like that okay same thing here tucking that one feather up under the other again we're not actually doing feathers we're not actually carving all the fletchings in and all the barbs and everything we're just giving it the indication and when we go back to the original, let me pull that one out here in just a second. When we go back to the original, the question is, how much detail do you want in this carving? And how much time do you want to spend on it? I'm, I'm, I'm doing these as a quick study, kind of the way it looks as a flat plane sort of carving. And so I don't need... I don't need a lot of special detail that I would put in if it was a realistic carving. And so when we go back to the original, if you notice, they didn't tuck anything in. Everything is just straight. And so as they did this, am I crooked? So as I did this, it's just got a cut here and a cut here, and then the rest of it is, is done with painting. So we're going to add a little bit of detail, but we are going to go back in here and do these little notches right here because you want that to be there. You can see here how much bigger my head is than theirs. Even though the body is roughly about the same size, the head I, I'm doing gives us more opportunity to put more facial features on here. Okay, lay that one off there. And I am going to just notch these out. So I don't need a lot of detail on this notch. Just the V cut out right there. And it just separates that feather right there. And so if you know at the top of the feather, there's a, a dark color up here. And the feather comes to a point like that. So we're, we're not actually carving the point, but we're giving it the indication. Because you can see that is not a point. That is just the way it's going to look on this one. So I'm just going to add a few cuts to approximate that. I'm not trying to get that full shape of the feather because, you know, I, I used to paint a lot before I became a carver and I, I still enjoy painting and I'll eventually go back and when I retire and I have time to do both painting and carving, I'll get back into the painting as well. And so one of the painting instructors I love to watch on TV is Jerry Arnell in the School of Fine Art. And one of his big things is quit, don't piddle, play, or putter. Get in, get after it, get it done, move on. Because you can sit here, and especially with paint, a lot of times the more you mix paint, the more gray you end up with. Well, the more we piddle around with this, unless we do that for the entire carving, we're going to end up with issues. Because I'll have one part of the carving that is just uber detailed, and another part of the carving that has gone rogue in terms of being 
not a lot of detail. So you see that little detail just adds that little bit, little bit of, little bit more of a, of an edge to it. So it looks like it's a full headdress. And I, and I've done these because I've done Boy Scout bolo ties for a long time, and one of the good sellers for a number of years, and, and good choices, was Native American with with a headdress. And so I've I've done several of those. Let me work a little bit on this hand a little because I like to jump around. I don't like to just stay in one spot. So when you look at your hand, if you curl your hand, and this is what this guy's going to be doing, his hand's going to be curled around a 